Hi, I'm Alex McCord, and welcome to The Real Deal on TheStir.com. Today we have part two of the season six reunion of The Real Housewives of New York City. And forget thug in a cocktail dress, now we've got Stonewall Jackson in an evening gown. Well, on last night's episode, we learned a few things. Apparently, books are like boobs, at least according to Aviva Drescher. Uh, you shouldn't ask someone if they've had their boobs done if you're not prepared for them to ask you if you've done yours. Hmm. You know, this line was the closest Aviva has be become to being funny the entire season. Though, to be accurate, I think it's ghostwriters are like boobs. Uh, reunions are for rehashing, this we know, but I cannot believe that hashtag bookgate is still being talked about. And the ladies still could not express their feelings clearly. So let me break it down. In the world of book publishing, lots of people have ghostwriters or co-writers. This is only a problem if you don't credit them. Then you're being shady. But if you did write every last word yourself, that's a badge of honor. So Aviva is claiming she gets the badge of honor and Carol is being shady. Carol is not happy about that, obviously. The end. Next, we need to talk about Sonia Morgan. Ugh. Last week, Sonia self-destructed, and this week we saw the cast and Andy pick up on that weakness and exploit it. Don't forget, these three hours of television are filmed all in one day. So when Sonia lost touch with reality, they did not treat her gently and give her space. They zoomed in on her like a pack of wolves surrounding a bleeding lamb. What I saw here is a perfect example of the culture of housewives. Sonia was clearly having a mental break, and instead of helping her out, everyone kept giving her more rope to hang herself. Andy pressed Sonia about all her interns. Now, I've said before, there are college interns. Simon and I use two or three each filming season from the fashion schools as wardrobe runners. But there's a lot of paperwork and school involvement. I can't see a department head visiting Sonia's house and declaring it a proper and professional workplace. And part of running a college internship includes setting specific goalposts that the intern is graded on. And if Sonia had been doing that, she would be able to tell Andy what the interns do. In addition to the interns, everyone flat out contradicted Sonia about her behavior in Saratoga and the whole Harry Dubin in a cab with Luann incident. Clearly, nobody believes Sonia and everyone has written her off. This was most obvious during the speed bump, reality TV term alert. If you don't know that term, the speed bump is the 60 second bite that's in the middle of a longer commercial break, and it's usually about halfway through the episode. It is designed to keep people from leaving the room during commercials or fast forwarding through them. So, in last night's speed bump, they showed a break in filming where Sonia was talking to Andy and Andy could not care less. He was in his phone saying, uh-huh, 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 not even paying attention, he totally tuned her out. Now, that is a metaphor for the entire franchise. I mean, no one's paying attention anymore. And everyone hates everyone. The whole thing is so anti-women. I'm beginning to wonder if Bravo hired Neil LeBute as a showrunner. Next, it was time for Emasculation by Bravo. I think this is the first time we've ever seen a package specifically put together to make all the husbands look bad. And oh, another term alert. Reality TV uses the term package. Okay, that is a selection of flashback scenes put together in a montage to show at a reunion. And typically there's one for each cast member and maybe one for each trip, each big fight, each memorable theme throughout the season, you get the picture. So there's a package of men behaving badly, but it actually ended well for newbie Kristen. I'd wondered throughout the season whether Kristen and Josh would suffer as a, way of the, as a result of the way their marriage was portrayed. Happily, Kristen reported that they realized how badly they were treating each other and they're working on it. They're making some changes. Great, and this, my friends, is a very valid reason to do reality TV, even if they didn't realize it going in. Even if you're being crucified in the edit, seeing yourself relate to your spouse on television is the best therapy there is. Well, aside from actually doing therapy on television. But in every reality experience Simon and I have had, we've learned something and we communicate better than ever as a result. I am so happy to hear that Kristen and Josh got something positive out of all the on-camera fighting. But let's get to Ramona. After production wrapped on this season, Ramona filed for divorce based on alleged cheating by Mario. They have since reconciled and the divorce is on hold and Andy wanted to know all about it. Ramona would not give an inch. She flat out refused to discuss it. From a production perspective, this is terrible and invites retribution on Bravo's part, but we'll get to that in a second. From the perspective of a wife and mom, Ramona did the right thing. Don't bring it up on TV if your teenage daughter will see it. 
That is fine and that is good, but it also unfortunately makes Ramona a hypocrite. Now I see what Luann was telling me in the Hamptons last month. She told me, quote unquote, that she got Ramona good. Here we are. <laughs> in seasons past, Ramona has never missed a chance to go after Luann about her marriage and her parenting. She said Luann had an open marriage, her husband was cheating on her, Luann is a part-time mom, and half the time these were not in response to a question, but Ramona bringing it up all on her own. Further, when Luann's daughter had a scandal involving an awful YouTube video, Ramona retweeted it. She deleted it later, but it happened. Now you all know I adore Ramona and I'm not objective at all when it comes to her, but even I can see that you reap what you sow. Given Ramona's habit of taking the initiative to drag other people's dirty laundry out, she should not be surprised that this is now happening to her. And in addition to the show drama, there's been drama playing out in the press as well. The gossip rags are predicting that Sonia and Aviva will be out next season, although other stories say everyone's out except Ramona. Of these two stories, I tend to believe that it's probably Sonia and Aviva over the whole cast. If the producers want to shine a light on Ramona's marriage issues next season, the only way to do that is to take away all of her support, and Sonia and Aviva are the ones supporting her. Sonia makes me so sad right now. In a perfect world, Bravo would keep paying her so she can live, but bench her from on-camera work. I mean, maybe they could hire her as a producer's consultant on the show. Wouldn't that be a coup? Get somebody who's been talent to switch sides and start making the show? I think that's a great idea, but I don't know if Sonya would go for it or if she'd show up on time. Now, Aviva. I don't know what to say about Aviva. I mean, she seems so uncomfortable being on TV and so terrified that she's going to look bad that she can't genuinely have a reaction. And so everything she does looks and sounds fake. I don't know what's going on. I mean, her father, George, married his fiance, Cody, whom we saw on the show this last weekend. Aviva didn't even go to the wedding. She's got to get her priorities straight. Overall, I am not sure that we even need a third hour of a New York City reunion. I don't know what else they can do here. Do you? Let me know what you thought in the comments. For now, I'm Alex McCord. You're watching The Real Deal on the Stir.com. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube, and I will see you tomorrow.